In this video, we solve problem 8.3.6-T. We're asked to use technology to find a p-value. We're told that the claim is that for 12 a.m. body temperatures, the mean is less than uh, 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'll write down that claim. The sample size is n equals eight, and the test statistic t is equal to negative 2.338. So the first thing I would always do is state the claim and then notice that it does not contain the condition of equality. So in this case, that is the alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis looks just like it, but it's got an equal sign there. And then um, remember what it is we're doing. If we're trying to find the p-value, um, that means we want the area beyond that test statistic. Um, now we might have to double that area um, if it's a two-tailed test. Um, so the first thing we need to do after we state the um, alternative hypothesis and the null hypothesis is we identify whether it's a two-tailed test or a one-tailed test. Because of that less than sign, which is like an arrow pointing to the left, we know that this is a left-tailed test. Since it is a left-tailed test, the p-value is a probability that a test statistic is equal to the test statistic that we got or less than that. So that's negative 2.338 in this case. Um, now I could easily just go to technology and show you how to find this, but I want to remind you of what it is we're calculating exactly. You might say, well, what does that have to do um, with this hypothesis test that we're doing? Remember, anytime you're doing a hypothesis test, you want to think about the sampling distribution of the corresponding sample statistic. So we're thinking about the sampling distribution of the sample means. And this distribution um, is drawn assuming that the null hypothesis is true. So we're assuming that those 12 a.m. body temperatures have a mean equal to 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we're saying to ourselves, for the given X bar, or for the X bar that we calculated from our sample, we've got a sample and we have its mean. Is that significantly high or significantly low given that the null hypothesis is true? We said, well, in order to do that, we convert this X bar to a test statistic T and we use a formula and that formula gives us this value of T. The P value is the area to the left of the test statistic, which is the same as the area to the left of this X bar. So when we're calculating the p-value, we're calculating the probability that a sample mean is as extreme as the sample mean that we have or more extreme than that sample mean that we, we have in our sample. And they actually didn't give that to us, but they gave us the corresponding test statistic and that is enough for us to find the p-value. Okay, so if I want this, well, that's an area in the left tail. I'm going to use Excel um, for this. Um, now we don't actually have a table of areas in the left tail, areas in the right tail and all that, not like we do for the standard normal distribution um, because the student T distribution can almost be thought of as student T distributions. There's more than one. Every distribution is a little bit different um, and the differences depend on the sample size. So that's why it was so important that they gave us that N equals eight. We're looking at a student T distribution, but we're looking at a specific one that is associated with having a sample size of eight. So um, if the sample size is eight, we say that the degrees of freedom of our um, sample is given by one less than the sample size. So that's seven. And that degrees of freedom seven is associated with this, this picture, this particular student T distribution. So if I want to find this probability using Excel, I'll use this function t.dist that's going to give me area to the left of this test statistic, negative 2.338. And then I want the degrees of freedom right there. So we've got this and that. This is easy enough to find in Excel. You just type equals t.dist and you see the other uh, T distributions that you can use. You can do area in two tails, you can do area in the right tail, um, or if you want area in the left tail, it's just t.dist, open parentheses. Oh, and it, they actually are giving us a third um, argument here. 
the first thing you type is the test statistic. And we'll say negative 2.338. That was given to us. The degrees of freedom is seven. And then they ask if you want the cumulative distribution. So basically, are they saying, do you want the area to the left of that? And we do. So we're going to say true there. So I need a, a third argument. We'll put true there for on that cumulative. And that is approximately equal to 0 0.025999. And actually, I don't know here how many decimal places they want us to round to. They want us to round to three decimal places. So if I round to three decimal places, this is going to be 0 0.025, and there's a 9 after that, so we're going to round to 0 0.026. That's our p-value, and again, the p-value is the probability that we get a test statistic um, as extreme as ours or more extreme than ours. And that corresponds to the probability that we get an x-bar value, a sample mean as extreme as ours or more extreme than ours, given that the null hypothesis is true. 